So with the complex numbers, we had a little bit of new stuff thrown into also some review from last year. Today's going to be pretty much review of last year. We're going to solve quadratics by completing the square. In theory, this is a quadratic. Uh, we could solve this a couple of different ways. One way would be to take and set aside equal to zero, like so, factor, so I get x minus 12 x plus 12 equals 0, so my answers are x equals 12 and negative 12. That's one way to do it. The other way is, since I have an isolated variable, I could square root both sides, but we have to remember when we square root two sides of an equation, we have to take the plus and minus of the right side, because a number squared could be either positive or negative to get a positive number. So this gets me x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 144, which is 12, which is what I got over here. Now, this is a little different way of looking at the same problem. Here is a term. It's not an isolated variable, but an isolated term being squared equaling a number. And if I wanted to get this term by itself, I could square root both sides. But once again, since I'm square rooting both sides of the equation, I have to take the plus and minus. So what I have is x plus 1 equals plus and minus 7, because that's the square root of 49. Therefore, x equals negative 1 plus or minus 7. And in this, I have two solutions, negative 1 plus 7 and negative 1 minus 7, thus getting me 6 and negative 8 and that's the two solutions. I could have, if I wanted to, foiled this out, giving me x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 49, set aside equal to 0, factored and solved, but why when I don't have to? Now this problem looks entirely different, but somewhat the same. You're going to want to say, hey, this is a quadratic, set that side equal to 0, because that's what we've been taught to do. So x squared minus 6x minus 1 equals 0. The only problem is I can't factor that. There's nothing that multiplies to negative 1 and adds to negative 6. But I do notice that, hey, take a peek. This is a perfect square. If I factor that, that's x, plus, or x minus 3 times x minus 3. And that's equal to 10. x minus 3 times x minus 3 can also be expressed as x minus 3 quantity squared, and now it's just like the problem we had in the last example. I have a term isolated, and it's squared equaling another term. I can go ahead right now, square root both sides, making sure I go plus minus here, and get x minus 3 equals plus and minus the square root of 10, even though that doesn't simplify. So now I have x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 10, and I'm all done. So solving by completing the square. This is not capable of being squared or put into a perfect square term. So we're going to complete the square. In other words, try to make a perfect square term. In order to do that, i got to follow these steps. First of all, make sure your a term, the term or coefficient in front of the x squared has a coefficient of 1, which this does. I want to isolate my variable terms in step 2, so I'm going to take and add a negative 1 to the other side. So I have x squared plus 8x equals 13. Then I want to find half the b term and square it. So I take half of 8, which is the b term, and square that value. So that's basically 4 squared, which is 16. Once I've done that, I'm going to add that new term to both sides. So I have x squared plus 8x plus 16. That's the term I've added to the left. So I must add it to the right. And notice I now have created 29 over here and a term that factors over here, x plus 4 times x plus 4. I've completed a perfect square term. So this is x plus 4 quantity squared. 
equals 29. I'm back to that problem we're comfortable with now. Take the square root of both sides, plus and minus on the right term, so I have x plus 4 is equal to plus and minus the square root of 29. Therefore, x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 29, and I'm done. And that's completing the square in a nutshell. Now we do it here. Notice the difference. I don't have any terms on the other side. It's just set equal to 0, but that's OK. I'm going to isolate my variable terms first. So that's x squared minus 14x equals negative 54. Take half of 14 and square it, which is 7 squared, or 49. I'm going to add that to both sides, so that's x squared minus 14x plus 49 is equal to negative 54 plus 49. Therefore, I have a perfect square of x minus 7 quantity squared is equal to negative 5. I take the square root of both sides plus and minus. This goes to x minus 7. Notice in this case I have a square root of a negative number. But since we just studied complex numbers, we can say that's i root 5. And then x equals positive 7 plus or minus i root 5. So we have a complex number as our solution, which is fine. We no longer say it has no solution. Where completing the square is a little more difficult is when we have a coefficient out in front. We have to remember that first term that said, make sure that coefficient is 1. It's not, so I divide every term by 3. And now we have x squared plus 6x minus 1 equals 0, and then go through the same process. x squared plus 6x equals 1. Take half that b term, square it, which gives me 3 squared or 9. Add that to both sides. So I have the quantity of x plus 3 squared equals 10. And then I square root both sides. So x plus 3 equals plus and minus the square root of 10. And then x equals negative 3 plus or minus root 10. The most difficult case is when we don't have an even middle term. We isolate, as we have every time before. The problem is, in this case, half of 7 squared is equal to 7 halves squared, which is 49 over 4. And I have to add that to both sides. So I have x squared plus 7x plus 49 over 4 equals, I'm going to turn this into 4, so that's negative 8 over 4 plus 49 over 4. And the problem is going to be factoring this, but it's really not that difficult because this is supposed to be a perfect square. And if it's a perfect square, the square root of this should be my factor. So if I say that's x plus 7 over 2 times x plus 7 over 2, and that's equal to 41 over 4, take a look. 7 over 2x and 7 over 2x makes 14 over 2x, which is 7. So it's factored perfectly. So this is x plus 7 over 2 quantity squared is equal to 41 over 4. Square root both sides, and I get x plus 7 over 2 equals plus or minus root 41. The square root of 4 is 2. Therefore, my solution is x equals negative 7 over 2 plus or minus square root of 41 over 2.
and I'm done. Again, pretty much a review of last year. Do your lesson summary and your Ed Connect, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.